Hi and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll walk you through MongoDB aggregation framework. MongoDB aggregation is such a topic in MongoDB that beginners find it little difficult to follow due to its complex learning curve. It's just like learning a new programming language. You have to struggle a bit in the beginning, but once you get a grip of it, you'll start seeing the applications and use it more often and more efficiently in your work. In this video, I'll be sharing with you practical examples of how to use MongoDB aggregation and what are the different processes involved in MongoDB aggregation framework. This video is part of my MongoDB crash course playlist where you'll find different topics of MongoDB and would help you to learn MongoDB from beginner to advanced. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe. And with that, let's get started. So to understand MongoDB aggregation framework, let's start with understanding what actually would aggregation mean. Aggregation is actually the process of gathering data from multiple sources and compiling, formatting and analyzing that data as you need. So for example, say you have a MongoDB database with multiple database collections and you want to perform some operations on that multiple collections. Say as part of stage one, you want to analyze that entire data set and get only a subset of data from that. Maybe as part of stage two, from that particular subset, you want to analyze further and get uh, accumulated data or maybe get only particular criteria data from that. Then, maybe as part of stage three, from the output which you received in stage two, you want to experiment further or you want to analyze further and get some other information from the data which you have received in stage two. So in each stage, you are actually deriving some data set and you are applying some use cases or some operations by using aggregation. So you started with multiple collections of database and in each stage, you did some operations on top of it and each output from each stage was input for the next stage. And that is how aggregation works. The aggregation framework has two parts. There is aggregation API, which resides in the MongoDB driver of the application on which you are running your aggregation query. And then there is aggregation runtime, which resides on the database engine. The purpose of aggregation API is to prepare the aggregation query for the database and send it to aggregation runtime, which runs it on top of the persisted data and provides you the output. Now let us see an aggregation example to understand what are the different components of aggregation. So this is how an aggregation query looks like. As you can see, I'm running an aggregation query on top of the collection result. And as an input to the aggregation, I'm providing an array of JSON. For each JSON in the JSON array, the key of the JSON is called a stage. So here, match, group, and sort are the stages of aggregation. You would also see some fields being annotated with a dollar, and those are known as expressions. There are also some other fields with dollar, and the purpose of that is to run some commands on your database, and those are known as accumulators. So this combined would make your aggregation query. So let's see what's actually happening in this aggregation query. So when you provide the input, that is the result collection in this particular query, the first stage is match, which is matching for a particular criteria. The criteria provided is that marks should be greater than or equal to 85. So in the result collection, all the documents matching marks greater than 85 are selected and passed to the next stage. In the next stage, you see there is some grouping happening. You are creating a new field underscore ID based on the expression. And the expression says it should be based on the field name of your result collection. And then you are creating total, which is based on the accumulation. And it's actually doing a sum on the marks field. And finally, you have a sort stage, which is doing the sort on total field. 
Now let us see the same query with the example of some data. So let's say this is the data set in your results collection. So there is name, subject, and marks of different students. And when we apply the first stage of match to match the marks greater than or equal to 85, you are left with only four documents which matches that criteria. When you further send this data from your first stage in your second stage of group, you're actually creating two fields, underscore ID and total. Underscore ID was based on the field name. So you see underscore ID as name Paul and John. And then total is based on the accumulation. And you can see this is the final result from the different stages which you had applied on aggregation. So when we talk about stages, there are different kinds of stages which you could apply on your aggregation pipelines. We already discussed match, which does matching the criteria. We had group, which would group the document based on some values. There is sort to sort based on some fields. And there is project, which will only project the field which you want to show in the output of that particular stage. In the current versions of MongoDB, dollar project is not that much promoted to be used due to some of the drawbacks it has. Instead, there are some stages called as set and unset, which could be used to do the same purpose. Expressions, as we discussed, are different fields which can be used as part of an input of a particular stage and it's annoted with a dollar it refers to the field in the input document and finally the accumulators are different operations which you could perform on the data so we did some in our example you could also do count to count the documents you could take an average min max first or last so there are different operations which you could perform using accumulators now let's walk through some examples of how to run aggregation on MongoDB. You can run MongoDB aggregation on MongoDB shell, or you can use the MongoDB Compass GUI. The MongoDB Compass GUI provides you an interactive way to run aggregation, in which you can select different stages as dropdowns. You can also use MongoDB extension for VS Code to run your aggregation queries. If you are new to that, you can check out my video here of how to use that. I'll be showing you some examples on how to run MongoDB aggregation on MongoDB shell and on MongoDB compass. So let's start with MongoDB shell. Here in my local host, I have a database AGG in which I have a collection results. Let's see the content of my collection. So I'll do a find. And you can see these are the documents present in my results collection and there are around six documents. This is the same example which we had seen in the slides. So let's now run that aggregation query. So this was the query which had match, group and sort. And when I run it, this is the result which I get with two documents, John and Paul and with the total sorted. So this was how you could run in the shell you could just provide it with the aggregate method. The better way or the more easier way is to use the GUI, MongoDB Compass. So let's connect our local host to MongoDB Compass. So this is the database AGG. And if I select that particular collection results, you could see all the documents present in that particular collection. And also you could see some extra tabs if you click on aggregation, then you get a window where you can do the aggregation operation directly on MongoDB Compass. So let's try that. So this is the entire data set in results. Now let's just click on add stage and add a new stage. So our first stage in our example was a match. So you can search for your particular stage and I select match. You could provide a query out here. So in our example, we had been doing marks greater than or equal to 
So you can see this is the result of that particular match. So we are getting only four documents out of six. So I search for group. And here you see a already filled template where I could provide underscore ID. And in our example, it was name. And the expression starts with a dollar, so it's dollar name. And then the new field which I want to create, and that was total. And I wanted to use an accumulator that is sum. So I'll use sum. And the expression on which I want to do the sum was marks. So I will select the marks field and be inside the quotes. Same goes with for the dollar name because the expressions would be defined inside quotes. And here you see we have the result set with two values. That is the total of marks of Paul and John of all the subjects. And then we have the final stage that is sort. So I can search for sort. And the field on which I want to sort is total. And it would be an ascending order. You see this has been sorted. Or any other operation, you could just select that stage and add here. If you decide to have some stage in between of your existing stages, you can also do that by selecting these three dots and adding a stage before or after. And also you can also you can delete a stage if required. Also, you can play around with the stages by moving them and then the result would change accordingly. If you want to save the pipeline which you have created, you could just save it here and you can name it. And in future, whenever you select that particular collection, you would have that created pipeline already present for you to test. There is another feature in MongoDB Compass where you can export the pipeline query which you had created here. If you click on export to language, you can see that this is the shell query and it's the same query which we had on our MongoDB shell. And also you can see the same in different languages. For example, it's in Python here. So you could actually export it to Python or if you want, you can also select any other language. Like if I want the same code for my Java driver, I could get the Java code for that particular aggregation. So MongoDB Compass also gives us snippets and we can use them in our code directly. Now let's take a look at one of the interesting stages in aggregation pipeline called as lookup. Lookup is used to bridge the gap between documents of your various collections. It's same as in relational database world, you have joins. Lookup does the same purpose of aggregating different collection data into your result set. Although in the MongoDB world, you would have embedded documents when you want to relate data from different collections, but there could be use cases where you want to keep data in separate collections, but you want to query them together. And in that case, you can use the aggregation pipeline along with lookup. So this is the syntax of lookup stage. You provide the lookup stage on the collection and you provide from, that is the from foreign collection on which you want to join. You provide the local field that is the local field name which you want to map with the one in the foreign collection. And you provide the foreign field, that's the field in the foreign collection which would be mapping with your local field. And as is the name of the field where you want to map the foreign collection data in your result set. So as an example, if you have an orders collection and products collection and you want to associate the data or product details for each of the orders you can do something like this on the orders collection you can have a lookup stage which would look up on the product collection on the local field product underscore id and the foreign field that is underscore id of the products collection and the result would be embedded in your result set for your orders collection as a field name product details Let's see as an example how we can use lookup in aggregation. 
So here I have two collections orders with these documents that is the order details and I have products collection with product ID, name, price and description. And you can see in orders collection there is a field product underscore ID which is a relation to the products underscore ID field. And now if I go to aggregation and add a stage for lookup. I could provide the details of the foreign collection that is the products collection which I want to aggregate and look up and also the field names. This would actually do a join of orders with the products collection and would give me the result in this field product details. You can see the value as an array and this is the value which was there in the products. Now let's take a look at some of the tips which you can use while using aggregation pipeline. You can actually disable the subsets of stages and then check out each of the subset to test. For example, if you have multiple stages which you want to run, you could appreciate each of the stages one by one and understand the purpose and the result set which you are generating because the result of the first stage would be the input for the second. So the order and the usage has to be understood and has to be used exactly as per the use case. It would be good for complex aggregation queries that you use some comments to mention what exactly the purpose of that particular stage is. And the indentation of each of the stage is also important that you leave some spaces between each of the stages so that it improves the readability. We have to keep in mind that using pipeline is an overload on the database because there would be multiple queries running on the database. So use of an explained plan to understand what exactly is happening on an aggregation query would give you more insight and would help you tune your aggregation query so that in a production environment you can use it efficiently. I hope with this video I was able to simplify what aggregation framework is and explain the basics of aggregation. Once you get a knack of what aggregation is, I would recommend you to go through this book, Practical MongoDB Aggregations by Paul Dunn, which has in-depth explanation of different aggregation topics and examples which you can try out and learn aggregation better. If you like my videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.